Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about coding interviews and if they're broken. So let's get into it. So the question in question was very simple. Frederick, do you think that coding interviews are very actually broken? Well, I I challenge you to to um, give a single example of a human process that at the end of the day comes down to evaluating something non uh, that that is subjective that is not broken in some way I can't think of a single system that is not unfair or discriminating towards certain groups or etc etc that has at its core the gut feeling of a person uh, whether or not we have the in as the ultimate measurement of uh, correctness that is uh, I mean the school system works the same way like uh, politics works the same way everything that uh, you can like short of math maybe or well as I said I can't really think of anything and the interviewing process is no different in software development that's why I tell my the people who keep on asking about this that you have to understand guys that the the, the evaluation process and this is why it's so weird for so many people to consider it's like consider their life achievement to be whether or not you pass say the Google or uh, Google interview or something like that guys what I'm saying is that your solutions or like the submissions that you make to these sort of code tests if you keep on seeing a pattern that you continuously fail then the problem is you if you fail one or two interviews the problem is most likely not you it is the interview process itself because it's a screening process that is subjective it's the same thing when you know people compete in music or food or anything like that bullshit where you have a bunch of judges it's really down to that or like your form sure okay, that's what I like about uh, racing or I used to like that about races like, I'm, I'm silly because I think that I'm, in my mind the car or the person or whatever we're racing that gets across the finish line first is the winner but to people that apparently started getting boring for some race sports or racing, so they started adding all kinds of other complexity to it. But th that is non-subjective. You got to cross the finish line before everybody else, following all the rules, etc., etc. Until now, gender politics came along and made it sort of a question whether or not you're actually I I if it's fair or not, and so forth and so forth. So you know, the the only thing that I truly really uh, I stand by usually is that. Uh, you, you, I, there is nothing a human being will not make unnecessarily complicated if given the chance. But the 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 reality is that that is unfortunately the situation with the coding interview. It is broken because if you think about it, I mean, usually people who ask this question they have never done the interview themselves. Uh, I'm saying like you have been interviewing for positions, but you've never had to co formulate an interview. Try it yourself. I promise you. The second is sort of like a worker who complains about the boss, and he he or she has never been a boss, and and you start seeing that oh, actually, there's a lot of complexities and nuances to this gig, and it's the same thing with creating a code interview. So like just the other day, I I did a take a code interview uh, with the candidate. Seemed to be a solid mid-level software developer. I had looked at his code test. I actually failed the code test because it wasn't all that good. I felt, uh, but I said that it's not. I mean, it's only minor. Well, I didn't fail the code test. I passed it, but it had a lot of these my tiny little things that were like bugs and things like that. That I mean, it's not a big deal. I can see that this person has written code that is like what I would expect from someone who is less experienced. This is not a master software developer, but I'm not hiring exclusively master software developers. So I said, let's do the interview because I usually say that it's almost impossible to, to tell if someone is good, quote unquote, based on just the code that they wrote. That is very difficult. And so we go and do the interview. Seemed to be a nice guy, seemed to have a lot of good passion, uh, he had ticked, checked all the boxes for a mid-level software developer. Then I give my stamp of approval, 
to my manager and say yeah this person if you're looking for a mid-level sort of software developer then this is your person and then another manager comes in and tells us that apparently this guy had forked a code test from another consultant that was working in the company that had posted his code solution on github and he felt that this was an automatic failure because this person has clearly been cheating now the predicament predicament for me is that yes he he did something that seems very really uh, seems really really like that is seriously bad it's basically cheating but i also spoke to this guy and i know that even if he had known the answers to my questions before we had the personal interview he would not have been able to convince me that he didn't know anything about software so now the question is should I fail this person or should my manager because he, he, he clearly cheated with the code test but he passed the personal interview where I actually ask a lot of technical questions and I know for a fact that he could not have faked those uh, interviewing questions. He actually was very truthful with things that I actually check whether or not they're truthful. So he would have had some serious coaching. Difficult, isn't it? It's the same thing when you look at the code test. Where do you draw the line for when a code test is passed and when it's failed? And that's why I tell my coworkers and the interviewers, like the recruiters who ask me when I say that I fail a test because unfortunately I have to fail a lot of tests. And I usually say that it's actually very simple. I tell you, I'll tell you how I evaluate the basic thing, which is the minimum requirement that you have to pass in order to pass my code exam or my code, whatever I'm interviewing, uh, reviewing is, and that is it has to work. If you do a front-end test and it's not responsive or it's not filling the specification, and I'm not, I'm talking very seriously broken. I say what I call, I used to what I call the drunk QA test. If I can, in no, if there's like a, if some colors or margins or something like that is off a little bit here and there, that's fine. It's all good because now it's close enough. But if you're if you're missing components or the thing is like it breaks on mobile or something like that, nope then you fail immediately. I don't even check the rest of the code because it's in irrelevant to me how fancy you made your code if the actual end result is shit. And I am fully aware of that that is not a completely fair way of looking at it depending on how you look at it. But then as I said uh, to my coworkers and my, uh, my the recruiter, that is why we have more than one person so now if you feel like the recruiter does usually because they just want that you just want headcount because they're weasels and horrible people uh, so what they will do is that they will try to figure out a way to get me to change my opinion or something else and i do the most diplomatic thing i can do and that's sell this person who is trying to make money go and ask one of the other software developers and see what they feel and then they use their gut feeling and most of my coworkers they are not like me they go all oh, right yeah like, uh, they're fine with that think is might be slightly broken as well but they are actually much stricter than me they will go into like oh there are no unit tests in this front end code test fail or they will go oh there's no um, i don't know the structure is bad or they didn't might do this or that or so forth and they say fail as well because it's a gut feeling there's no way to objectively evaluate if this is a good piece of software or not. It's down to people. And then we go into the personal interview. And so, of course, this is broken. But guys, I have to tell you that this is how literally everything that is not like a an exam and you mean even that is unfair if you depend on how you look at it because I don't I read somewhere that math is racist these days so like you can always make that argument that something is broken but yes I agree the code interview is broken to uh, depending on how you look at it and the worst part is that the thing is both people are mostly concerned with that it's broken because it's unfair to them when it's also actually unfair to the people inside many cases because a lot of the interviews are done by ignorant people who don't know how to interview software developers so we have people who don't who get through get into this uh, to the company who let's just say that I would not hire them myself for my own company 
So what I want you to take away from this is that yes, join the re the line of people who want to bitch and moan about that the coding interview is broken. But uh, then you know, you know you can join the other lines where they say that the Oscars are unfair or that their like applications to uh, universities are f unfair or politics are unfair. Everything is unfair, guys. Everything is broken. Anything that is a gut feeling of another person type of evaluation is going to be unfair to some people. And software interviews are no different. And that's why I tell you, I promise you, the second you get to be the person who's going to do the evaluation you will understand why it's impossible to be fair and why you have to just do the one thing that I urge everybody to do and that is to truly understand what it is that you are trying to achieve I've tried to coach my co uh, my co-workers into that as well where I try to explain to them because some of them are very strict like really really like they're basically looking for perfection I say are you trying to hire the next genius software programmer of the world no you are trying to hire a person who can fulfill the requirements of the position that we are looking for that means that you're trying to find someone who is good enough to do the job and when you look at it through that perspective you will make the fairest assessment that you can possibly make because guys some people are just so bad at software development that even if you're looking for a junior level software developer you can't hire this individual because they simply are not capable of producing work in a manner or like at the level that a junior level software developer can handle and if they can't do that then we can't hire them but at the same time we can't be so insanely strict that we're looking for like this idea that we're only hiring a rockstar it's bullshit because if you're saying that you're only hiring a rockstar either you're lacking such such amounts of talent in your company that you need all those rockstars or it is that you are ignorant of how the work is actually done. It's sort of as I like to say, when you're hiring someone who's going to lift boulders, well, you can pay for a guy or a girl who is like a gigantic bodybuilder, and they're probably going to charge you a lot of money, but then if you only move pebbles, then that's pretty much a wasted money right there. So what you might want in that scenario is someone who is sort of strong, maybe not as strong as the strongest one, who can still lift those pebbles. That is what I say mean when I say, understand your fucking problem before you start just solving things and most interviewing processes are actually broken in both directions because the average software company they don't even know what type of programmers they need have a great day